I have something very important that I've been thinking for a very long time. And I put it into, into writing yesterday, just briefly on No Star, and explained it to Marix. And, and, and now I'm, I'm starting to think it's, it, it's, it's an important thing because this could be the key of, uh, of a better future. This, this argument could be summarized by either David Friedman's vision um, he, he wrote about in the future imperfect or the sovereign individual's vision that they wrote in 1998-ish. So both of, both of these are thinking about the same idea, which is that there are, there are two things in this world, meat space, and cyberspace. <clears throat> so, as time is passing, the relevancy of meat space will go down, and the relevance of cyberspace will go up. This is something we can we can feel. Uh, because we can look at the past and this is happening because we spend more time on in meat space than in cyberspace. So how, how long is this trend gonna continue? I don't know. But it's not inconceivable that meat space is gonna be almost irrelevant at one point and cyberspace is going to be the relevant thing to, to focus on. So that's, that's one thing. Now, there is a problem in this world, which is the management of violence. And the thesis of sovereign individuals that they can um, analyze violence um, and try to predict where it's going. And you might be tempted to analyze violence in terms of individual or groups of individuals. Who has power here? Currently, it is, it is government who are monopolizing on most of the powers. And then there are individuals who has less and less powers. Now, there is another distinction in, in between the powers uh, because powers can be defensive mainly or in opposition offensive. Um, think about nuclear bombs or, or guns, they are mainly offensive, but Anonymity systems like encryption, anonymous communications, or anonymous money, they are mainly defensive. They are defending the individuals or groups. But, but this is not a, not a one size fits all. So it could be defensive and offensive at the same time in different contexts. So, 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 so this is just a rough estimation. Um, now, individuals increasing the defensive powers of the individuals against the groups should be the goal because groups right now hold like a monopoly on power and it would be better to to get some some power back from the groups those are monopolizing the power for us now it must be noted that there is going to be a side effect of, of, of that, which is that smaller individuals will also be able to, to make, to do suffering into the world in, in more degrees as technology is empowering individuals. So smaller organized crime, like that's going to rise and the largest organized crime, like governments are going to go down um, in, in terms of power. <laughs>
or or monopoly market share of violence. So, so this is the context to the idea of what I'm going to talk about now, which is that concerning cyberspace, can we build an economy where the trade is unobservable. Because if, if the groups have monopoly on crime, violence in mid space, what we could do is that to make it so that in cyberspace they do not they do not see the trades going on, the economy, because it's an unseen economy. Eventually, this is the economy that is going to matter because the cyber, cyberspace is going to be the space that is going to matter in the future. I don't know how, how long it's going to take, but the trends are pretty clear. So the question is how do we build a cyberspace economy, an unobservable cyberspace economy? For that, let's analyze trade. So what is a trade? Trade happens between two parties, two people or groups of individuals. Usually one of the one of the party has a thing, uh, let's call it good or service that it's offering. And the other party usually has an obstruction of volume. And that's called money. And they are exchanging these things for money to good. That's a trade. Okay. Now, the thing here is it's happening in a context. So there is, although money mediates the exchange of goods, there is something that mediates the entire trade and that is the communication in between the parties. So they are they are communicating with each other. So this these are the three main constituencies of the trade. Someone creates a, some volume good, it exchanges it for some abstract agreement of value and they are communicating how this thing should be happening. Now, what does that mean? That in order to make this trade, this economy unobservable, we must build all three constituencies of a trade make them unobservable. So, communication, money, and the good. Let's start with the good. The thing here is that this has a huge variety of things. You can be selling things and post and send it physically. You can be also selling a service where everyone has to be in the same place and you get a massage or you can be selling another kind of service cloud computing um, which doesn't require any kind of physical presence but it would require in order to make it unobservable it would require some kind of technical solution for that all of these these goods these are very varied this is the what's what's been exchanged on the marketplace Every, every one of these require or, or benefit from having a unique approach of exchanging that good unobservably. So what are these goods then? These are the business opportunities of all the young upcoming cyber and cypher punks. But in order to exchange these goods, we also need, unobservably, we also need to make 
communication and money unobservable on top of it. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Let's say there was some great idea called Open Bazaar, which had, that was a decentralized marketplace. And the thing was there that they didn't have anonymous communication and anonymous money accessible, or, or the solutions were not good enough uh, for them. I mean, uh, assume an anonymous money that's very expensive and very slow. I mean, sure, you can build certain kind of goods or services, but, but we, we want the money to be as good as any other money is and to be unobservable. So, and, and that's when we can get to the cyberpunk economy. Now, we have to build anonymous money and anonymous communications and it would actually be pretty handy if a developer, any developer who want to do some, some crazy, crazy world changing idea in the new unobservable cypherpunk economy, um, communication and money. So this should be, because this is a constant part of every single trade, these prerequisites should be already provided in a library, for example. Okay, so that's what we need to do first. We have to build anonymous communication and anonymous money in order to empower cypherpunks who want to build specific services for specific things and have an unobservable cypherpunk economy. What this results to is that the trades are not going to be observed anymore by a evil third party who actually has meat space violence monopoly against the parties who are transacting. If we cut this off, if they if we cannot see what's happening, then we will have an economy that doesn't is not limited by the violence organizations of meat space.